In this video we're going to be finding the mode of a continuous random variable. One thing to note is that we find the mode from the probability density function, not from the cumulative distribution function. So just to remind you, the PDF is denoted by small fx and the CDF is denoted by capital FX. We need to sketch this one, the small fx, which is the PDF, in order to find the mode. And the way that we find the mode is by looking at the highest point on the graph. And so there are a number of ways, or there's two ways, really, of finding the highest point on the graph. Sometimes it's very obvious and you can just sketch it and find it graphically. That's the first thing that we're going to do. However, sometimes it's not that easy to find or see what the highest point of the graph is. And so in those situations, we also then need to differentiate in order to find the highest point of the graph. So let's start by looking at the first one that we're going to be looking at, which is finding the mode from the graph. And we've got to remember that the mode is the highest point on the graph. So if I make up a continuous random variable and a function that works. So here's our PDF. The first thing that I want to do is to sketch the graph to see if I can find, if I'm able to just see what the highest point is on the graph. So I'm going to draw in my axes. And I'm going to substitute in my limits. So we've only got one function to deal with, and it's between 0 and 1. So if I substitute in 0 into our function, we get 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1, over 4. So the height there at 0 is a quarter. And if I substitute 1 into that, the height is going to be three quarters. So I'm going to draw it in. It's a straight line between those two points. And it is zero otherwise. So there's our PDF. And we can find the mode very easily. The mode is where the highest point is. And the mode here is 1. And that's, we've seen that from the graph because it's the highest point. So it's just, it's just that easy when, when it's obvious, obvious where the highest point is. The highest point here is clearly when x is 1, so our mode is 1. But now let's move on to a second type of example where it's not quite as obvious. So again, I want to find the mode, but I'm going to have to take a different route to finding it. I'm, I'm going to sketch the PDF anyway, um, because this will help me kind of get an approximation, of, you know, help me see if my answer is correct. And also it's just good practice to make sure that you're always sketching your, your PDFs. So drawing in my axes, and we've got a function between 0 and 6. So I'm going to start by substituting in my limits. If I substitute 0 into this, this part is going to become 0. So the whole thing is 0. If I substitute 6 into it, 6 minus 6 is 0, which will make the entire thing 0. So we know that it touches the x-axis at 0 and 6. If I substitute 1 into this, I'm going to get... 25 over 108. So at 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, I'm going to try and find all of those points. So at 1, it's 25 over 108. I'm going to say that's approximately there. At, when I substitute in 2, we're going to get a value of 
32 over 108. When I substitute in 3, we're going to get a value of 27 over 108, so it's slightly above 25 over 108, so it's about there. If I substitute in 4, I'm going to get 16 over 108. And then if I substitute in 5, I'm going to get 5 over 108. So we can see that the curve will kind of look like this. It's a cubic, it's not symmetrical, and I am able to see from the graph that the highest point is around here, so around 2. So when I differentiate to find the turning point of this graph, I'll know that it should be around the 2 mark, otherwise um, something's gone wrong in my, in my differentiation. So let's, let's do this, let's differentiate the, the function to find the turning point. So I'm going to just expand all of this to make it possible. I'm going to keep the 108 out of it. So we're going to have x times 6 minus x times 6 minus x. And so when we expand this, we're going to get x times 36 minus 12x plus x squared. And if I multiply through by x, our function is 36x minus 12x squared plus x cubed. So now if we differentiate this, I'm going to keep the 108, sorry, the 1 over 108 outside. But if we differentiate this to find the turning points, we should get that it's equal to 0 at the turning points. So we'll have 108 times 36 minus 2 times 12 is 24x plus 3x squared. So now we just have a quadratic that we need to solve, and this will tell us where the turning point of the graph is. So I'm going to multiply through by 108, which will leave us with 36 minus 24x plus 3x squared. That's equal to zero. And I can see that all these three terms have three as a factor, so I'm going to divide through by three. We'll get 12 minus 8x plus x squared is equal to zero. I'm just going to rewrite that in the more conventional form. And so to factorise this, I can see that it's able to be factorised. We're going to get x minus 2, x minus 6 equals zero. So either x equals 2 or x equals 6. And so those are the two turning points of this cubic graph. Um, from our graph, we can see that the highest point here is when x equals 2. So the mode is equal to 2. And that's confirmed by looking at our cubic. Here's one of the turning points. Here's the other turning point, so the graph will start to go that way, but our PDF is between 0 and 6, and so there's our highest point at exactly 2.